Over the years, Well Channel has made um, many different forms of, of the direct ophthalmoscope. This is model number 11720. Uh, this one is slightly different. This is a, by comparison, one that's decades old, and you can see the 11620, but they keep changing the design over the years, changing the way they're assembled, and um, changing the various filters inside the ophthalmoscope. Typically, Well Challenge does not sell any replacement parts, so if something breaks with the ophthalmoscope, it's broken, and uh, they, they will give you a trade-in on a broken or fogged up ophthalmoscope that you can no longer use, but they won't sell you replacement parts. This um, 11720 has additional filters on the front as well as the internal ones. Um, this one does not have a filter on the front. This is an older version that actually has a um, polarized cover on the front of it, which also darkens the view, but um, it both keeps out dust when it's closed, and it also gives a polarization effect, um, I think, to reduce some glare that, if you're having glare looking at the, the person's eye. Typically, I've always used it in the open position of this model. So the ophthalmoscope uh, has various size apertures and grids inside the um, ophthalmoscope. It's tough to tell this one's sort of a uh, green hue. But the current ones, the modern ones, typically have three different size apertures uh, of white light that are circular. So basically, when an ophthalmoscope gets uh, fogged up optics, um, you're left with um, replacing it, um, which you can turn in for credit. Uh, this this brand, um, I just looked up on a Brunel online website, and it's uh, two hundred forty dollars for the um, one one seven two zero. Um, uh, maybe twenty dollars less. The last time I got um, the one one. 710 from uh, Lombard Instruments, but you can expect to spend um, around 250 for a replacement ophthalmoscope head. It is possible though to service an ophthalmoscope instead of throwing it away or for turning it in. Um, there's basically three screws that hold the ophthalmoscope together Underneath this um, forehead rest is a tiny little screw which happens to be a Torx T5. Loose, loosen it up, in this case it came out. And then the third screw is actually, this knob is actually um, a threaded knob. If it's very tight, what I typically do is cover it with a cloth so it doesn't get scratched, and then a um, small pliers and try to unscrew it without, without scratching it. Once I've got it loose, it basically unscrews, and then depending on the brand, it sort of pops apart on you and uh, you have to figure out how to get it together again. So this component has a, um, a spring which allows it to advance one lens at a time and then a lens power wheel. Underneath it is a little plastic rim which holds a magnifying lens in place to help you visualize the numbers on the uh, power wheel. As time passes and use passes, it takes several years to a decade for crud to get inside the ophthalmoscope and you can then 
clean off the parts inside all around the rim and then pop out all the little parts. Spring can also be removed. And then you can actually scrub this piece of plastic with uh, soap and water. Uh, and you take it to a sink. This is uh, basically a clear liquid hand soap um, with no lotions in it. And this is a, is a good soap. Basically scrubbing with a uh, toothbrush, a soft toothbrush all over the surface and then blow drying it with um, with some size uh, hair dryer to drive off the the moisture. This unit has a lot more complexity, and this is the way it was uh, designed a couple decades ago. There's a prism in here which shines the, the light straight out of a, and a mirror in there. There's filters built into this wheel. The filter itself can get dirty and it's possible to, to disassemble this to, to clean out the, uh, the inside of it. No longer made like this but if you do happen to have an old scope the um, Screws again a Torx T5, which holds this in place. Two screws, one on each side. Then there's a spring and a ball bearing and a shaft inside. So here's the uh, the screws that secure it and the um, a little lens inside that can be cleaned. This is an adjustable height that is supposed to touch the bottom of that lens, which can pop out. This is a uh, spring. Inside of it is a ball bearing. And then there's a tiny little shaft down the middle. Once the shaft is out, the filter wheel comes out. This similarly can be cleaned with um, running hot water and a toothbrush with soap. Uh, drying it is similar. You can blow dry it with a hair dryer, but it's, sometimes it leaves water spots behind it. So what I sometimes do is get the, um, um, not this type of Q-tip, but there's, um, there's some wooden Q-tips that are very has a, have a very thin wooden shaft and by putting a, a tissue over this and poking in the tissue with this thin wooden shaft I can actually blot out the moisture for each of the filters and cleaning it on both sides and drying it off the same way and then blow drying to make, make sure the rest of the moisture is out. In a similar fashion this type of lens power wheel to clean it, I typically take it to a sink, scrub it with uh, the clear liquid soap, run water over it, get all the um, soap rinsed out of it, uh, blow dry it a little bit, blot it, and then the same sort of story, putting a, uh, a tissue over the surface here. And with either this or a smaller size um, wooden type um, cotton tip applicator, the tail end of it, you can basically blot out the, uh, the water after it's been scrubbed clean. <clears throat> then it's just a matter of putting it back together again. So there is obviously an up and down to this filter assembly.
Now what the ball bearing does is there's a little dimple in this wheel and the ball bearing which goes in this hole drops into the dimple and then the spring goes on top of it and that allows it to click into each of these filter positions. And then when it's assembled correctly, you can feel each filter click into place as you rotate it. Now the way these two pieces, they basically uh, sort of sit in place. And pretty much just play around with it until you figure out how you get it back together again once you disassemble it. But you can also scrub this side because the dirt from the uh, from the outside basically gets in along this space as well and it can cover all around the inside of this housing and so by using uh, a little toothbrush, soap and water you can scrub all this out and get all the dirt out of it and then put the filter back in place numbers have to go to the outside. Before you finally screw it back together again, just make sure everything looks like it's in order. This older version only has two circular white filters. The 11710 newer version is put together differently. It's still the same uh, basic principle that the uh, knob here holds the bottom portion together and the Torx T5 screw is underneath the um, brow pad on both sides. So this is a different design of spring. It's a spring with a little plastic bump that fits into the edge of the wheel. Similar setup, a little plastic holder and a um, lens inside the hole here to magnify uh, 
the number images on this lens wheel. Similarly, similarly this can be scrubbed with uh, soap and water, um, but differently it's much easier to dry off because all the lens areas are exposed on both sides and so it's possible to clean and dry it and not leave any water behind. Um, this label though, uh, water can and does seep under it while scrubbing it if you're brushing it with soap and water. But that typically dries out and doesn't cause any problems. On this side it's a totally different design. There's a mirror at the top, there's a condensing lens inside, but the filter assembly is very different. And it's not even screwed together, it's sort of snapped together. Similar thing, there's a ball bearing and spring inside as well as a filter wheel. There's a peg in the center there, which aligns it together. bearing and spring. Similar fashion, the um, filter assembly can be cleaned as needed by scrubbing and drying off with um, a hair dryer. And then reverse the process and put it all back together again. Well, it might not be obvious, but getting this little compartment together with the filters is exceedingly more difficult than it is in the older styles. The last mechanism was uh, drop in the ball bearing, drop in the spring, put on the cap, tighten it up. This one trying to get the little ball bearing balanced on top of the spring putting these two pieces of plastic together aligned over the central pin. Extremely tedious. I like the old design very much better. Now interestingly, when I ver the very first time I ever worked on an ophthalmoscope was about 40 years ago. And at that time what the ophthalmoscope had was instead of this molded wheel with all the little powers inset into it, it actually had individual little glass lenses of a specific power that were held in place by a plastic plate. And when the ophthalmoscope broke apart, I thought, well, let's see if I can figure this out. I was actually holding up each individual lens with a tweezer over the opening of, of a lensometer to find out what the power was. And then when it said 40 on top, I put the 40 on the bottom. And when it said 10, I put the 10 opposite to it so that the, the numbers on the bottom but the lens is on the top and so uh, it was a very difficult reassembly job. Now one molded plastic wheel but again you can't buy a molded plastic wheel. If the ophthalmoscope breaks the most you can do is hope to either turn it in for credit or if you have other ophthalmoscopes that are broken of the same brand, you can swap parts to try to get one ophthalmoscope out of two broken ones. Or just turn it in and, and get credit for it. Turn it in if it's too dirty to use and buy a new one. And so uh, eventually I get all the little pieces back together again and and everything works properly. So if you, you can take an ophthalmoscope, which is too filmy to look through, clean the lenses and or clean the filters and get back to 100% fine.
functional ophthalmoscope having spent nothing other than time. However, a few parts pop out and you've got nothing but a, a broken scope that you should be able to put back together again and um, uh, turn in for credit. But um, if you do everything correctly, don't lose any parts, then you can get back to 100% functional scope. Um, I find the most challenging one, the um, 11720, but what I end up doing when I work on this one is to um, reassemble it without this filter. I leave this little tab in place, but this is a spring-loaded um, tab that allows the filters to slide back and forth. So you're adding two filters to the system by having this in place, but I find it just so difficult to um, reassemble that whenever I clean the optics of these, I'm just trying to recover the basic function of the ophthalmoscope and dis I basically discard the filter, but I leave a little slider in place just because there's a hole there otherwise. But it's the same sort of filter arrangement, same sort of disassembly underneath the, uh, the brow rest. It's not a Torx. Underneath the brow rest is a Torx T5. This has additional filters on it. Now once I pop this apart, it's not coming back together again the same way. So here's a ball bearing and a spring, which you could probably use um, inside of here. But that ball bearing and spring goes to this little gear and slider and the little filter assembly here, all of which I discard except when I put it back together again I'll put the slider in place there just to fill. Just to fill the hole here but it won't be sliding a filter across. Now in this scope, there is actually um, a filter here which needs to be cleaned front and back. And in similar fashion, there's a filter here which needs to be cleaned front and back. The 11710 does, has the space for this, but does not have a filter there nor does it have a filter um, here. So this is a way for dust to keep from getting in, but it's also one more surface that has to be clean when you dismantle the, the device. So the main thing this has is uh, filmy optics of the, uh, of the viewing lens, and that's the only thing I'll end up cleaning on this um, ophthalmoscope. And so I'll clean this, put it back together again, and then discard the, um, the filter. Actually, I don't discard them. I sort of save them. I don't know what for, but I save all these parts. And it's something I could use in a future time if I need a little ball bearing and a spring. In actuality, with this disassembled, I, I will also clean the inside plastic surfaces here because this is um, part of the whole optics getting dirty. So scrubbing off the crud probably end up scrubbing it also with um, with a toothbrush bead but uh, this is also a source of dirt for the um, ophthalmoscope getting fogged up So no longer an overall white haze when I try to focus uh, through the ophthalmoscope, so successful cleaning of the lenses by disassembly.